Welcome to the world of mysteries, your portal to the unexplained and the unknown. Today, we delve into a saga that has baffled experts for over a century. The case of Jack the Ripper. Who was the shadow lurking in the gaslit streets of Victorian London? What drove the horrifying spree? that left at least five victims in its wake? And why, after countless investigations and theories, does the true identity of Jack the Ripper continue to elude us? Step back in time with us as we explore the chilling details, sift through the theories, and journey into the dark heart of one of history's most infamous mysteries. Unearth the secrets of Jack the Ripper with us, right here on World of Mysteries. As we journey into the heart of our story, let us first immerse ourselves in the world where it all unfolded. Victorian London, a city of stark contrasts and hidden dangers. Picture the East End during the late 19th century. A bustling, overpopulated maze of streets, where the air is thick with the smoke of industry and the faint glow of gas lamps barely cuts through the ever-present fog. Here, in this labyrinth of narrow lanes and crowded tenements, the rich tapestry of London life is overshadowed by harsh realities of poverty and destitution. This is a world where opulence and squalor exist side by side. The affluent move through the city in their carriages, blind to the plight of the destitute masses, for whom survival is a daily struggle. The East End becomes a melting pot of cultures and classes, but also a breeding ground for crime and despair. In these dense streets, the Metropolitan Police face an uphill battle. Policing methods are still in their infancy. Forensic science is a term yet to be coined, and detective work is more about pounding the pavement than psychological profiling. Officers are often outmatched by the sheer volume of crime. From petty thefts and drunken brawls to more sinister acts that lurk in the shadowy corners. The police force, stretched thin and under-resourced, battles not only the criminals, but also the mistrust of the very people they vow to protect. The Ripper's heinous acts will soon lay bare these limitations, challenging the force like never before, and leaving an indelible mark on the history of criminal investigation. In this environment, where every shadow could conceal a threat. The stage is set for one of history's most notorious killers to emerge. This is the world of Jack the Ripper, a realm of darkness and mystery waiting to be unveiled. As we delve deeper into the enigma of Jack the Ripper, we come to the heart of the mystery. The murders that shook Victorian London to its core. Between August and November of 1888, 
a series of brutal killings occurred, each marked by chilling signature that would become synonymous with the Ripper's name. Our journey begins on August 31st, in the dimly lit alleys of Whitechapel, where the body of Marianne Nichols was discovered. Her tragic end marked not just the life lost, but the beginning of a terrifying pattern. On September 8th, Annie Chapman met similar fate. Her last moments spent in the shadowed streets where danger lurked unseen. The double event of September 30th claimed the lives of Elizabeth Stride and Catherine Eddowes, their murders mere hours apart, a testament to the Ripper's escalating boldness. And on November 9th, Mary Jane Kelly's life was cruelly taken, her demise the most gruesome of all, signaling a horrific crescendo to this series of unspeakable acts. In each case, the Ripper's modus operandi was chillingly clear. A swift, silent approach, followed by a brutal attack, often targeting the throat. But it was the post-mortem mutilations that truly marked these crimes with a signature of macabre precision, hinting at a mind as twisted as it was methodical. Yet, amidst this narrative of horror, it's crucial to remember the women who found themselves unwittingly at its center. Marianne Nichols, Annie Chapman, Elizabeth Stride, Catherine Eddowes, and Mary Jane Kelly were more than just victims. They were individuals with hopes, dreams, and struggles. Each came to London's East End, seeking a better life, only to find themselves navigating a world rife with hardships. Their lives, marked by personal tragedies, reflect the harsh realities faced by many women of the era. As we explore the chilling details of these crimes, we are reminded that at the heart of this mystery are real human stories, etched into the annals of history, not for their end, but for the lives they led. In the wake of the grisly murders, the streets of Victorian London were not just haunted by fear, but also by an insatiable hunger for news. As the Ripper's infamy grew, so did the public's fascination, igniting a wildfire of rumors and sensationalized reports that swept through the city. In the crowded pubs and teeming marketplaces of the East End, rumors and gossip spread with a speed and intensity that the slow-moving investigation could not match. These rumors were not just idle chatter. They influenced the collective psyche of London's inhabitants, breeding an atmosphere of paranoia and mistrust. The constant barrage of speculation and sensationalism blurred the line between the fact and fiction, complicating the task of law enforcement and fueling the climate of fear and uncertainty. The role of the press in the Ripper case was a double-edged sword. On one hand, it kept the public informed and the authorities under pressure to solve the case. 
On the other, it often hampered the investigation, leading to false leads and a frenzy of baseless accusations. The media's portrayal of the Ripper and the murders also had a profound impact on the social fabric of the time, reinforcing class stereotypes and stoking the fires of sensationalism that have kept the Ripper legend alive for over a century. As we transition from the dark tales of the murders to the intricate web of the investigation, it's crucial to recognize how the proliferation of news and rumors in Victorian London created a backdrop against which the drama of the Ripper investigation unfolded. This climate of heightened public interest and media frenzy not only reflected the societal norms of the time, but also set the stage for the challenging task that lay ahead for the detectives of Scotland Yard. In the ominous shadow of Jack the Ripper's terror, the investigation, spearheaded by Scotland Yard, became a monumental endeavor in criminal history. Scotland Yard, the epicenter of London's law enforcement, mobilized its best minds and resources, though they were battling against the limitation of their era's forensic capabilities. Central to this investigative force were notable figures like Inspector Frederick Aberline, whose acute investigative acumen became the backbone of the inquiry. His efforts, characterized by a mix of intuition and dogged determination, exemplified the Yard's commitment to solving the case. Despite the constraints of the era, he employed what we would now recognize as early forensic techniques, attempting to piece together the killer's profile from the scant evidence available. Inspector Edmund Reed, another key figure, brought an intimate understanding of the East End's intricate social and criminal web. His deep connections within the community were invaluable in navigating the complex network of local informants and shady figures in search of leads. The investigation's arsenal included the pioneering work of Dr. Thomas Bond, whose expertise in forensic pathology was groundbreaking. Bond's assessments of the victim's injuries provided crucial insights into the nature of the attacks, offering a glimpse into the killer's methods. Though rudimentary by today's standards, Bond's approach marked a significant advancement in the application of medical knowledge to criminal investigations. Another intriguing character in the periphery of the Ripper saga is Dr. Joseph Bell, whose methods in diagnostic surgery were said to have inspired the character of Sherlock Holmes. Bell's emphasis on close observation and deductive reasoning had a subtle yet profound influence on investigative techniques of the time shaping the approach of detectives like Aberline and Reed. As Scotland Yard's investigators grappled with the case, a diverse array of suspects emerged, casting long shadows of doubt and suspicion. Montage John Druitt, a barrister with a troubled personal history, became a figure of interest due to his untimely death shortly after the murder ceased. His connection to higher social circles and his abrupt demise added layers of intrigue to his candidacy as a suspect. 
Aaron Kosminski, a Polish immigrant battling severe mental illness, also became a prime suspect. His name surfaced based on witness accounts, though these were marred by inconsistencies and the biases prevalent at the time. The lack of concrete evidence and unreliable testimonies left his involvement an open question. Other suspects, like George Chapman, known for his medical background, and James Maybrick, who became a posthumous suspect following the discovery of a controversial diary, further complicated the investigation. Each suspect brought a unique aspect to the case, reflecting the complex social fabric of Victorian London. The investigation was not just the pursuit of a killer. It was a battle against the era's limitations in policing and forensic science. Eyewitness accounts were the primary source of information, yet these were fraught with inconsistencies and influenced by societal prejudices. The infancy of forensic science at the time meant that the crucial modern techniques like fingerprinting and DNA analysis were unavailable, significantly hampering the investigation. The Ripper's case also highlights the societal dynamics of Victorian London, with its stark class divisions playing a subtle yet significant role in the investigation. The murders, occurring in impoverished areas and targeting marginalized individuals, shed light on the societal issues of the era. These factors added complexity to the investigation, as detectives had to navigate a society divided by class and rife with social prejudices. Scotland Yard's efforts in the Ripper investigation, though ultimately inconclusive, set the stage for future advancement in criminal detection. The involvement of figures like Aberline, Reed, Bond, and even the peripheral influence of thinkers like Bell demonstrated the evolving nature of criminal investigation, laying the groundwork for the sophisticated forensic techniques of modern policing. As we explore the various suspects in the case, we encounter a microcosm of Victorian society, from the mentally ill to the socially privileged. The diversity of these suspects reflects the complexity of criminal profiling before the advent of modern psychological and forensic methodologies. In sum, the key characters in the Ripper investigation, from the dedicated detectives of Scotland Yard to the enigmatic suspects, form a rich tapestry of Victorian life. Their stories, intertwined with the broader narrative of the Ripper mystery, offer a compelling glimpse into the investigative challenges of the time and the societal context that shaped the pursuit of one of history's most elusive killers. As we venture deeper into the shadowy world of Jack the Ripper, we encounter a labyrinth of theories and speculations surrounding his identity and motives. Over the decades, the Ripper case has become a canvas for both amateur sleuths and professional historians alike, each painting their own portrait of the possible perpetrator. One prevailing theory suggests 
the Reaper could have been a member of the upper class, perhaps even royalty, driven by a deep-seated psychosis. Contrastingly, others propose a more mundane suspect, a local butcher or a surgeon, skilled with a blade and familiar with human anatomy. The idea of medical professional being involved gained traction due to the precise nature of the mutilations, though contemporary beliefs often overlooked such details in favor of more sensational theories. Modern criminologists and forensic experts bring new perspectives to these theories. Utilizing contemporary understanding of criminal psychology, they suggest that the Ripper might have been driven by a combination of socio-economic factors and personal psychopathology. This contrasts sharply with Victorian-era beliefs that often attributed criminal behavior to inherent moral failings or madness. In debunking popular myths, it's essential to address misconceptions, like the Ripper's supposed surgical skill. Modern forensic analysis indicates that the mutilations, while gruesome, were not necessarily the work of someone with anatomical expertise. This challenges the long-held notion of the Ripper as a skilled surgeon. Now let's indulge in what-if scenario. What if modern technology was available in 1888? Today's forensic science, with DNA profiling, advanced blood analysis, and psychological profiling, could have been pivotal in narrowing down the suspect list. Modern investigative techniques like geographic profiling and crime scene reconstruction might have offered critical insights into the Ripper's movements and methods. These tools at their disposal, Victorian detectives might have unmasked the elusive killer, bringing closure to a mystery that has captivated us for over a century. As we explore these various theories and counter-theories, it becomes clear that the Ripper mystery is not just a tale of bygone era, but a case that continues to evolve with our growing understanding of criminal behavior and forensic science. As we reach the end of our journey through the shadowy streets of Victorian London and the chilling saga of Jack the Ripper, we are left with an enduring mystery that continues to captivate and perplex. The Ripper's heinous acts were not just isolated incidents of brutality. They were a reflection of the societal and cultural complexities of the time. In the gaslit alleys of the East End, where poverty clashed with progress and fear mingled with fascination, the Ripper emerged as a dark symbol of an era riddled with contradictions. The case of Jack the Ripper is more than a tale of unsolved murders. It is a narrative that intertwines with the fabric of Victorian society, highlighting issues of class disparity, media sensationalism, and the nascent state of criminal investigation. Despite the passage of time, the mystery continues to resonate challenging us to consider the depths of human depravity and the lengths to which we go in our quest for truth. But the story doesn't end here. It continues with you, our viewers. What are your thoughts on this enduring mystery? Do you have a theory about the identity of Jack the Ripper? 
or insights into the motives behind these infamous crimes. We invite you to share your perspectives in the comments below. Engage with us and with fellow mystery enthusiasts as we collectively ponder the unsolved and the unexplained. Don't forget to like and follow for more content where we delve into the depths of history's greatest enigmas. Then consider subscribing to World of Mysteries. Your engagement helps keep these mysteries alive, encouraging us to look deeper, question more, and maybe, one day, inch closer to answers that have eluded us for over a century. Thank you for joining us on World of Mysteries. Until our paths cross again in the pursuit of another enigma, keep questioning, keep wondering, and remember, the mystery lives on.